This is 5.5 Axial Skeleton Notes. The essential question is, what are the names and locations of the bones that make up the axial skeleton? Recall that the human adult skeleton has 206 bones, which is less than the bones of a human child or a baby, because as the child or the baby grows, the bones fuse to become less. The two major categories of skeleton is the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton includes or contains bones of the skull, which is made up of the cranial bones and the facial bones. The vertebral column, which make up the bones of the spine, including the sacrum and the coccyx. And the bones that make up the ribs and the sternum, the rib cage. The appendicular skeleton is made up of the pectoral girdle, which supports the bones of the upper limb, and the pelvic girdle, which is basically the base for the holding up the torso, and then the bones of the lower limbs. Bones of the skull is made up of the bones that make up the cranium, and cranium is the space that the brain sits in, and that is made up of the frontal bone, which make up the bone in the forehead, the parietal bone on the sides, which make up the top lateral or the side portions of the skull, and temporal bone is below, below the parietal bone, and it's the bone right above the ear, which we commonly know as the temple area. The occipital bone makes up the portion of the skull in the back of the head. The sphenoid, you can see a portion of it on the side, but majority of the sphenoid bone can be seen at the floor of the, the cranium. And then the ethmoid is the bone just behind or posterior to the nasal bone. The ethmoid bone forms the roof of the nasal cavity and forms the medial portion of the eye socket or the orbital cavity. The skull bones in children and babies are not connected. And as the adult grows, the child grows, the bones fuse together. And what remains of that joining of the bones is the suture. The sagittal suture is the one that fuse the two parietal bones. Lambdoidal suture is the one that joins the occipital and the parietal bone. The coronal suture is the one that joins the frontal and the parietal bone. And the squamous suture is the one that joins the parietal and parietal and the temporal bone. The skull also includes the bones of the face. Maxilla is the upper jaw in the green. The mandible in the purple is the lower jaw. The zygomatic, which is the cheekbone, is the anterior half of the cheekbone. The back or the posterior half is basically the temporal bone. And then the nasal bone in the yellow is the bridge of the nose. Palatine bone here up here forms the posterior um, portion of the hard palate. The anterior portion is made by the maxilla or the upper jaw bone. The lacrimal bone can be identified the hole that it is, which is basically leads to the tear duct, and it's the anterior medial portion of the orbital socket or the eye socket. Two bones in the nasal cavity. The inferior concha is the, the most lower bump coming off the lateral portion of the nasal cavity. And then the bone, the vertical bone that separates the two halves, the left and the right nasal cavity, is the vomer. Hyoid bone is also part of the axial skeleton. It sits just at the base of the jaw and it is a, a horseshoe shaped bone and it is considered a sesamoid bone which means that it is not attached to any 
other bone, it is just completely surrounded by muscle. The vertebral column is the spine or the backbone. It is made up of 22 vertebrae. The first seven vertebrae is called the cervical vertebrae, and it's numbered the most superior or the top one being C1, and the most inferior or the bottom one numbered C7. These make up the bones of the neck region. Distinct features of the cervical vertebrae is that they have a small body out of the other two vertebrae, and these holes right here called the transverse foramen point straight up and down, unlike the other two vertebrae. The first two cervical vertebrae have names. The C1 is called the atlas, and it forms a ring, and it lacks this structure called the spinous process. C2, the axis, does have a spinous process, and it forms a ring, but what is distinct about C2 is that it has a structure called the dense that straight points straight up. The reason C1 and C2, atlas and the axis, have names is because they do not look like the typical cervical vertebrae. The next 12 vertebrae is called the thoracic vertebrae. It is numbered again from the most superior one being T1 and the most inferior one being T12. What is special about the thoracic vertebrae, it is the portion where the back portion of the uh, rib cage is formed by the attachment of the ribs to these thoracic vertebrae. Cervical and lumbar do not have the attachments for the uh, ribs. Another distinct feature about the thoracic vertebrae is the body is a slightly bigger and taller than the cervical vertebrae, and it has a long spinous process. And unlike the cervical vertebrae, it lacks the, it does not have the transverse foramen, the hole that's pointing up. The last five vertebrae is called the lumbar vertebrae, which make up the back the lower back spine. It is numbered L1 to L5 and distinct features of the lumbar vertebrae. It has a very big and tall body. It has a very blunt and short spinous process and it is much bigger overall than the cervical and the thoracic vertebrae. Just inferior or below the lumbar vertebrae is the sacrum, which is a fusion of five bones in childhood or as infants. It is called the small of the back, and it is located between the two coxal bones, and it is the bone that forms the portion of the pelvic girdle. Just inferior or below attached to the bottom portion of the sacrum is the coccyx bone, and coccyx bone, again, is a fusion of four bones, and it is the tailbone. So picture to the right is the picture of the entire vertebral column. Notice the first seven is your cervical from C1 to C7. Then you have the next 12, which is T1 to T12, is the thoracic vertebrae, which is the attachment for the ribs. Next five vertebrae is the lumbar vertebrae from L1 to L5, which is the bones of the lower back. Then there is the sacrum, and below that, the coccyx. Ribs are connected to the thoracic vertebrae. Because there are th 12 thoracic vertebrae, there are 12 pairs of ribs. The first seven pairs is called the true ribs because they are directly attached to the costal cartilage, which is the cartilage at the front of the uh, rib cage attached to the sternum or the breastbone. The next five pairs are the false ribs, and which means that they are indirectly attached to the sternum via the costal cartilage. And within the five pairs of false ribs, the last two pairs is called the floating ribs because they do not attach to anything. Okay, so the first seven pairs, notice they are directly attached to the sternum via the costal cartilage. The next five pairs are called the false ribs because they indirectly attach to the seventh rib 
via the costa cartilage. And the last pairs of the false ribs are the floating ribs because they do not attach to the costa cartilage. 5.5 notes homework is number one, name the bones and locations of the cranial bones. Number two, name the bones and locations of the facial bones. Number three, what are the names of the bones that make up the spinal column and how many of each are there?